Hello everyone and welcome to Juggling Balls. I'm your host Stuart and this is going to be a quick reaction piece to the Brooklyn Nets trade and their current situation um, with Kyrie Irving. If you do enjoy this, uh, please give us a subscribe and let us know what you think of the trade and Kyrie's situation in the comments and we'll get cracking. So, if you have just woken up to the news or you've only just become aware or you've been living under a rock, James Harden's been traded now eventually to the Brooklyn Nets as of last night. Um, obviously, Woj, Adrian Rojanowski, for those who aren't in the know, broke the story. And there's a lot of pieces involved. It's like a four-team trade. Oladipo has gone to uh, the Rockets and... Uh, Levert went from the Rockets to the Pacers and there's a, there's a lot of things going on. It even includes the Cavaliers. I think Houston have ended up with four picks um, and a few other little like little cherries on top of the, of the cake as well. So yeah, obviously it's been a, it's, it's a very big trade that's took a lot of organisation uh, which is probably why it's taken so long for these trades to happen. Um, obviously the first initial reaction is basically Harden's got exactly what he wanted it's been playing out all summer ever since the Rockets went out is the question has been, is Harden going to be there come start next season? I personally didn't think he was going to be, but here we are. He was there. He played a few, a few games and really the game the other night when he comes out and says that the Rockets aren't good enough to compete really was the first sort of sign where he was telling everybody vocally out in the public, I want out, get me out of here now. Um, I think really the... I mean, we say that was sort of the first vocal sign. I mean, the whole farce with him being spotted in the strip club without a mask, partying. Obviously, that's... And then the whole coronavirus outbreak that they had at the Rockets when they only had like six or seven players or eight players to play goes to show that he really didn't want to be in the place anymore. Um, so yeah, he gets exactly what he wanted. My next point is obviously with this trade and with what they've given away in terms of picks, Levert going, all this stuff is really sort of removed future planning for the Brooklyn Nets. This is firmly now a team that are all in. There is no reason for them not to compete. And for me, they don't really have any excuses now to not make the finals. I mean, really, they were in everybody's top two or three teams in the East to get to the finals to face either the Lakers or the Clippers, really. Those are the teams that everyone's talking about, let's be honest. And going forward, really, they don't have any reason not to make the finals for me. If you, especially if you factor in, if Irving comes back, if Irving comes back and the three of them are creating together and they are willing to give up the ball for each other, which... For all intents and purposes, Kyrie and Kevin Durant have been going backwards and forwards, assisting each other. It's not like one person's been scoring 30-40 a night. It has been fairly balanced, and I think Harden is going to come in and probably want to continue that. Obviously, there's going to have to be more management between the players because you're not going from just two alphas like Kyrie and Kevin. You're going to three where James is going to want the ball, Kyrie's going to want the ball, Kevin's going to want the ball. But I think that the first two in particular are going to know that there needs to be more balance. So for me, there's no reason as to why it shouldn't work really. Um, you've got, if you have, it's it's like going back to the Warriors scenario. If Steph had an off night, Clay and Kevin were there. If the other two had an off night, Steph and Clay would be there. And really there's enough, there's, there's more than enough options. You've got three players who can quite easily go score 30 plus points a night closed with their eyes closed really there's no reason for them not to be scoring 110 plus points a night especially with the bench options that they've got and the rotation that they're going to have so yeah I think that really the Nets don't have any excuses and I would be amazed and shocked quite frankly if they don't get to the finals now moving on from that um my other question that I have in my head, and I'm not 100% sure, sure on, I don't think anybody is because no one really knows the full details and, and nor should they really of what's going on with Kyrie Irving. Obviously, the reports are that he's been out and that he doesn't want to play at the moment. Um, there's been no reasoning as to it. And again, I'm not here asking for him to give those details. If it's per personal reasons, like you stated, 
that should stay behind closed doors and no one has the right to demand that from him. And really, if he's not wanting to play because of those personal reasons, then he has the right to do that. If it is, say, for example, the only problem I have with Kyrie not turning up is the fact that he didn't tell the organisation. He just texted his teammates to say, I'm not going to be there, and it's personal reasons. Um, That's the reports anyway. Whether that's true or not, I'm not 100% sure. But the language that came out of Steve Nash in his conference was that, was, was that it went along with that story. So for me, he's really done the Brooklyn Nets a disservice by not let, giving them a heads up to say, something's up, I need to go deal with it. And then when they're about to play, he's on a Zoom conference with with a um with some in regards to election for a for a DA. I can't exactly remember which area it was for, but he was in in regards to discussing that for the for a DA election and, and trying to help help with that and discussing some issues on that. Now if the personal reasons were family born and and obviously the they that he just couldn't get his head together and he couldn't play. That's fair enough, and and I have absolutely no problem with that. And I don't have any problems if he's trying to do his, you know, the social justice campaigning. Like, absolutely spot on if he wants to do that. Like, more voices need to be heard on a bigger platform, and I think Kyrie has been one of those. And he did say back in, um, I think it was June or July when they were talking about going into the bubble and whether or not people were going to play, he that he was willing to give everything up for it which is totally commendable and that's absolutely right. But my point would be that for Kyrie to have the full impact that he's wanting to have, being involved in the NBA and using that platform and the resources he gets from it and using that platform to promote the social justice matters that he's wanting to discuss is probably going to be more valid for him and it's probably going to do more and it's going to reach out to more people. Whilst if he just quits now, it's... it would st- he'd still have a bigger impact. It would probably have a bigger impact short term to show that a pl- players are worth are giving their their all and are quitting the thing that they love the most to to give it up. But in three four years time, people are going to probably moved on from that, and he's now just going to be a voice a, a voice out there that may not hit as much as if he was doing it in front of the national media, in the press interviews, in the aftermatch conferences and, and all that stuff that people people see on a daily basis it and keeping that message going on a daily basis is the most important thing but I think that the problem the problem that everyone is having with Kyrie at the minute is that yes he has these personal problems and no one knows what it is and again that's up to him but then to be seen on that press conference and then to be seen at a party with, without wearing a mask and not keeping himself a distance from everybody especially with everything that's going on with the pandemic at the minute it kind of suggests that he's a man that doesn't want to be involved with basketball in a minute. And if that if that's the case, then that's absolutely fine. Just take a sabbatical or take a break. Or if it is to the point where you don't want to be there anymore, just retire. Don't don't put yourself in with basketball anymore and just go do what you want to do with your life. He's got the money. It's not like he's he's lacking for money. He's got probably hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank. And he can go use that and go do a social justice if that's where that's where you feel his calling is and more power to him if he wants to do that but I just think that the way he's gone about it isn't right and that goes on to my last point on this is that has this trade happened now because of the because of Kyrie going AWOL are they worried that if KD's got to do it all on his own that that's going to leave them short and that they need still need that second man to him because Irving's not going to be there. Now, that's obviously purely speculation on my point, but it, still, the question has to be asked because if Kyrie's not going to be there, as good as KD is, and he's probably top two, top three in the league, easily top two for me. It's between him and LeBron for the best player best player in the league. Is that going to leave them so short with not having that second option that they don't think he's going to be able to carry that team all the way there. And for me, I think they would be good enough to get into playoffs. It would just the question be, are they going to be able to get to the finals with just KD on his own? And the answer for me at the moment is no. But having Harden there, even if Irving doesn't come back, is absolute yes. If Durant and, and Harden are playing the same way and are scoring 30, 40 points a night, 
even even twenty five points a night, really they should be winning games and and getting and getting far in the playoff run. So for me, it's obviously a good trade for Brooklyn, especially with the mentality of win now. Um, obviously the story itself is going to develop over the coming weeks because we're going to find out what's happening with Irving. He's probably going to be in in quarantine of some kind because um, he's been seen to be breaching COVID protocols from the NBA. So it's only going to develop further and it's going to be a fascinating watch for everybody. And I'll leave it there. Um, just a quick reaction to that for you. Um, if you do enjoy, did enjoy that, um, please give a subscribe and leave a thumbs up and leave it, let us know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks very much, guys.